oh god 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 <laughs> hey guys it's Aaron and chapter seven chapter seven the twisted Christmas gift that RT decided to give us this year um like I said in my thank you video I have been waiting to see this I didn't I wasn't able to get the I'm off to a great start I wasn't going to be able to see it on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day so I was like, please don't, please don't spoil it for me, please do not. So I like, I've been avoiding YouTube and Twitter like the plague the best I can. That being said, I still got a couple spoilers because, you know, it's Tuesday. It's kind of hard not to. Um, so I think I might know what happens to Tyrion. And Winter might be in this. And I'm scared for Weiss because this episode is called Punished. Punished. And we all know that she kind of was like, fuck you, dad, last episode. So, you know, I'm scared for her safety. And I'm generally concerned about how this is going to go. But I am really scared that something horrible is going to happen to her or Team Ranger or just in general. And I'm worried about what's going to happen to Tyrion. Because I'm not the biggest fan of him, but I saw this one theory on Ruby Amino that makes me a little bit sympathetic towards him, maybe. But at the same time, I don't want Nora to get messed up. Of which, I was supposed to have my Nora cosplay done. It's like 95% done, but the wig won't get here for four more days. Otherwise, you guys would be experiencing this in cosplay. But you know what? Fine. Oh god, I am not ready for this. I've been avoiding everything. No one, I had no one tell me anything about it. All I've been hearing is general, holy shits. And David said he screamed. And so I'm kind of concerned from what my reaction is going to be in that case. And I'm really hoping it's recording the audio. Oh, God. Oh, God. I am just fear. I am just fear about this episode. Oh, God. Here we go. Come on, play. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting sick again, of course. This used to feel like a fairy tale. Now it seems like we're just pretending. Strong world and we're on our way to a happy ending. Oh, it's still too high for me when I haven't warmed up. It's like a bedtime story. Of which, by the way, I was right about Jacques being, um married into the Schnee family. I finally saw the World of Remnant on the SCC and it talked about how he married and Al was like, I knew it, I called it, I have so far managed to call two things correctly in this season and I take great pride in that fact. <laughs> oh, should we follow through when the hope is gone? But like the mustache brigade. We have Jacques, we have Watts, we have Court. Two out of three of them are evil. Let's just live day by day with nothing conquered but our souls. Just can't hold us down, we must break free. Inside we're torn apart, but time won't bend our hearts. And no, we're not there yet, so let's just live. Also, I got them fancy ruby tights, leggings, so I'm pumped. Oh, Oscar! Oscar almost ready. What is he reading? What are we having? Doesn't matter. <laughs> I never agreed to these terms. It's part of the living under my roof contract. <laughs> Relatable. Oh, I'm, I'm like shaking for what's coming during the. I went through the same panic and confusion. When? Person to person? This is some Chamber of Secrets right here. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. I can assure you, you are perfectly safe. I'm talking to a voice in my head. I didn't say you were normal. <laughs> I said you were sick. There's quite a significant difference. Shut between up! Think this is funny? It's not. We are in complete agreement on that matter, I promise you. Believe me, I wish this weren't the case. But as I've told you, our aura, our souls are combined. How? 
how? Why did he think this was good? Listen to you. Have you ever been to Haven? I told you I'm not going, and I told you I'm done listening. Do you think you could describe the headmaster's office? Oh. No. Why would I know that? I've never seen. Try. Right now. But Ozpin has. Wait. So if their auras. That's probably. mahogany desk there's a small table and chairs in the corner for guests with a tea set that I I gave him why did I say that how do I know that why did I say that because I helped build that school and the tea set was a gift to the man running it now what if you don't believe me can look it up. <laughs> if I recall, your aunt has several books on Mistral downstairs. I'm certain you could find a picture in one of them. That, that's right. I must have seen it in a picture. <sighs> Oscar. Stop talking to me! I have a grave responsibility to uphold. We both do. Oh no. You never agreed to anything. No, you didn't. And neither did I at first. But you do have an opportunity. To do what? What? Greatness, hopefully. But not greatness in knowing that when the world needed help, you were the one to reach out your hand. It won't come without hardship, without sacrifice. <laughs> but I know you don't want to live the rest of your life working as a farmhand in Mistral. So he is in Mistral. So you just decided to read my thoughts? I, well, they're our thoughts now. I just love that he's voiced by Shannon McCormick, considering he voices Wash, who experienced great trouble with other people's voices in his head. Now he's the one being the voice in the head, but, so if their souls are combined, but that brings up a whole other thing, because when they were talking about the Maiden... Any idea what your stunt cost us? I and don't think I'm just talking about Lien here. Our reputation. Our <laughs> our You're disgusting. I want to leave. Come on. I beg your pardon. Come on. I said I want to leave. I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to stay in Alice anymore. Young lady, I don't give a damn about what you want. That's been this made perfectly you. clear. This is about the Schnee family name and your apparent insistence on dragging it through the mud. Oh, you're one to talk. I have done nothing but fight to uphold the honor of my family name. Oh. Name you married into. Oh. <gasps> this behavior of yours is incredibly couldn't possibly understand the lengths I've gone to in order to keep this family where it is. You think running off like your sister is going to make the Schnee name stronger? You're wrong. Siding with her only divides us. I'm not siding with anyone. I'm doing what I feel is right, and that does not include wasting my time up here with these clueless people in Atlas. The Schnee family legacy isn't yours to leave. It's mine, and I'll do it as a huntress. No, you won't. You're not leaving Atlas. You're not to leave the Manor grounds God. unless I specifically allow it. God damn it, I knew You're it! You're going to remain here, out of sight and out of trouble, until you and I come to an agreement. Are you serious? What? Are you... Your Kitty. supposition that you can simply have whatever it is you want is a clear sign of our failure as parents. Oh. But from now on, I'll be giving you the full attention you require. <laughs> starting by keeping you where I can see you. You can't just keep me from leaving. I can. And the staff here will make sure of it. Klein, so come on. now I'm just your prisoner? You are my daughter. You're a child. 
and children are grounded when they misbehave. This is different. This is only going to make things worse, Father. People will ask questions. They'll want to know why the heiress to the Schnee Dust Company is suddenly nowhere to be found. Which is why you are no longer the heiress. I knew it. I knew it. Excuse me? Clearly, the trauma you endured at the fall of Beacon was too do, much for you. Do not turn it around like... Generously revoked your claim to the company and its earnings. Passed them on to your brother Whitley. I knew it. It's time to wake up and face reality. I knew it! I knew it! Her entire life she's defined herself. Whitley? Yes, sister? <sighs> Did you know about this? About yes. What? <sighs> Don't play stupid. but supportive since the moment I came back. If being kind to my big sister is some sort of crime, then I suppose I'm guilty. <sighs> you wanted this to happen. It's foolish not to do as father asks. I can't believe you. Don't worry, Weiss. The Schnee family name is in good hands. He's just like his father. <laughs> the night, the painting. You have little to lose. She's gonna keep trading. See, I could be free now. I could be fine. Oh my god. No, 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 no. As I live and breathe, Crow Bronwyn. I knew he would know him. A true huntsman has entered the fray. Oh. Bullshit. I don't know. This guy's weird. <laughs> Look, Pat, I'm not sure who you are. Okay, so he doesn't know him. To leave my niece alone. So Salem briefed him. Why, friend, my name is Tyrion. And I'm afraid that is not possible. My assignment from her grace was to retrieve this young girl. So that is what I must do. One does not upset the queen. Queen? Salem. Same? I think we've had enough. Talk Come on. Him, don't you? Come on. Ruby, get out of there. The words right out. Oh, <laughs> for once he didn't let him finish. No, stop buffering! Oh, thank God. Crow's theme again. But uh, with a hint of red like roses. Part two. Holy shit! You know this! No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on! Get out of there! Oh! Don't come closer! Fine! Red like Ruby. The original. Ruby, I love you! Come on, come on! And she can't do an AoE because she'll hit Crow! Okay, that does not- Oh! 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 No, 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 Come on, those- Ruby? Nothing like a good old-fashioned fist fight in the world of Remnant. How much force can- Crow, 
Branwyn, I love you. This is a new track. He's just walking! What the hell? Run! Why are you walking? Don't be such a sarcastic. You have to show off, don't you? Oh my yes. Yeah, oh my god. Now that's what I call using your environment. Right now, pro team again. Oh no, the buildings are weak. He knows what he's doing. <sighs> Why is he wrapping his tail around him when he could just? Come on, Ruby. No, Ruby, Ruby. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. That's so anime. Oh shit, his aura. Shit, it's failing. How good is Tyrion? But Tyrion's is too. Tyrion's is too. Ruby, did you wish to be taken? No, but I won't stand by and watch someone get hurt. Not again. Ruby, I love you. Come on, you can do this. Your semblance of speed. Song, though. It's, what is it then? Be clear, Crow. <gasps> oh no. <gasps> no, no. Wait, it's just a scratch. He didn't puncture him. He'll be okay, but his aura is gone. No, he used his venom. He used his venom. Paralytic. It's a par. Swearing language. That's like cutting off a hand. She'll forgive you. No, she won't. No, she won't, Tyrion. It's a it's a paralytic and a neurotoxin. Are you okay? I'll be fine. He just grazed me. He that guy. How did you get here? Why are people after Ruby? Get him help. What's going on? What's your favorite fairy tale? <sighs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I always forget to stop the video. Jesus Christ! What the hell was that?! Oh my god! I can literally feel my heart pounding out of my chest. Jesus, there's... so much! Oh my god! But Crow is not gonna be okay. This is not the time for them to sit around. He used his his venom or his semblance, whatever it was, they need to get him help. And they're in the middle of nowhere. God damn it, Jean, if your aura really is something about buffing people or healing them or some form of defense, that would really be the time to use that. <sighs> and then Weiss's father and I was right about Whitley and her being stuck in the mansion and he knew it. He knew all along what was gonna happen to her. And he wanted it! Ugh! Just an Oscar, an Ozpin, and their auras and their souls are bound. It is the man with two souls. Blake's novel was foreshadowing from volume one. We all thought it was ninja fan fiction! But no! But I don't quite
quite understand because back in volume three when they were talking about autumn or amber and it was they were gonna give her her aura so two auras two souls they didn't know that what, what that would do to her but Ozpin could have known because the way he talks he talks like it's happened to him so is Ozpin just this is he just the next person in line? Is he some other entity? Because Austin was confused, so he's not the first one to do this. He had someone in his head. He had two souls. He probably, he could have had two souls when he died. Is he like the fucking Avatar here? What the hell? There's so many questions, and I don't even know where to start. So he could have known what would have happened with Pyrrha and the Maiden. But he may not have known what would have happened continuing on past that, because the... Unless the aura would keep transferring, but it would make sense for it to leave Pyrrha as leave Pyrrha behind, so it's still just the Amber's consciousness transferring along the line. And that's clearly not what's happening with Ozpin, because his consciousness is there as well. So, you know, I was never really a huge supporter of the Ozpin as the wizard theory, and I'm still a little iffy on it, but I think... He's more, made more mistakes than any man, woman, or child. He's not only talking about himself! Fuck! That wasn't just him! It's never been just him. He's always been somewhat of a shadow, of a mirage. And it's because he's two people, if not more. He's one person's experiences over and over and over again. Constant iterations like a computer program trying to solve a virus. And Oscar's the next one. He couldn't be the hero as Ospin, so he's gonna have to try again. Ugh... And the fact that they described the Mistral, the Haven Academy headmaster's room means that we're probably going to see it eventually. I'm very excited for that. I am so excited for that. But, oh my god. I'm still, my heart is just pounding. Jesus. So, that that's Ozpin, but why is his father? Jesus Christ, I feel like I need to go bathe in bleach just from hearing his voice. Just, it, of course, it was her fault what happened. And of course, she generously gave up the thing. He is using her experiences and her trauma as an excuse to step on her. And this is all he's wanted. He never wanted Winter or Weiss to be the heir. He wanted Whitley. Because Whitley's a puppet. He could control him. Whitley does exactly what his father wants. He will be the figurehead of the Shitty Dust Company. <sighs> so Winter was originally the heir. She said no first. She may have been tried to, trying to bring back the family name like Nicholas Schnee, except not doing it in the format of a huntress, but doing it through the military, establishing boundaries, helping people through, or trying to help people through the Atlas military. And Weiss took it a step further. No, she was going to be a huntress. She was going to restore this to what he wanted, to what her grandfather wanted. And the thing is, Weiss calls him out on that. He's like, this isn't your, she's like, this is not your, this is not your name. This is my name. You married into this. And it's something that I've always been concerned to point out because there's no way that he was born under the Shini name. The way he acts, his like constant blood, white knuckle grip on it is not something you have if you were born with this. And he slapped her. It is disgusting and repulsive. And I can't help but find some significance in the fact that it was on the side that her scar was on. Even if it, make, even if it was just a staging thing. There's significance in that, even if it was an accident, because it makes more sense for Weiss's father to be pacing, not in front of the bed. It makes sense for Weiss to be there because she's cornered, which is frankly the way he likes to handle his problems and his children, which is disgusting. Right. Text message. But <sighs> he's the reason she has that scar. She sent, he sent that night after her. He is the one who let her learn how to fight. And so, when she summoned the sword, Winter says when they discuss summoning, think of your greatest challenges. I think that chose, forced you to reevaluate who you were. It was the day she got that scar. And this is going to be the same situation. This is the day that her father slapped her. It is the day that she stopped being the heiress to the Schnee Dust Company and began being Weiss Schnee, who would do anything to undo what her father has done, to leave Atlas and fix everything that just to make things right and help people 
to uphold her family name the way it should have been the entire time. With no corruption, and none of her bullshit father telling her what to do when asking for figureheads. And he cared about the Li Yen, of course he did! How could they even- I don't quite understand how they could lose the Lien from that, because they paid for the concert, so they can't exactly refund them. Like, I can understand getting the lady some money, but frankly, she was out of line. She started the confrontation in the first place, frankly. So, it's just, like, I guess any glassware that was shattered, but it's disgusting. And Whitley knew this whole time, and I knew it, every, every inch of his posture, every slight movement he did mimicked Jacques. Precisely. Jacques walks with his hands like this. Whitley walks with his almost the same except farther back and less of a dominant and more of a submissive position. He has made it clear that he will be exactly the man his father was, but only once his father is out of the way. Until then, he will be his father's perfect little son, ready to take on the Schneedust Company and continue running it the way that they both think it should. With corruption and on the backs of hundreds of people, of thousands of people, who are getting stepped on and trampled and forced out of business and treated unfairly because of who or what they are. And it is disgusting. I'm not even shocked at this point, just because what I thought was true was true. And I am so proud of Weiss in this moment because she knows that she's right. She used to she lost herself to her father's words before. That was all mirror, mirror. That was entirely, she didn't know who she was. She had, sac like, she had sacrificed herself to give her father the perfect daughter, to be the perfect little ballerina on a music box that he could wind up and perform whenever he wanted and close when he didn't want to deal with it. She had lost her identity besides that. But through Beacon and through Team Ruby and Team Juniper, she managed to find who she was once more. That's what all of her songs are about. And now she's not going to let that go. She has been fighting for her life. She fought for, she fought for, she fought to be who she was before. She fought for her life at Beacon. Now she's fighting to stay who she is now. And that takes a lot of guts and a lot of confidence and a lot of courage. I honestly thought she was going to cl cl climb out the window and leave, but that's not her style. Running away wouldn't change anything. It's not who she is. She doesn't run. So she's going to fight back. That, that's who she is. That's what she does. Subtle acts of revolution with her ponytail on the opposite side to fight her father's... Everything in the Shni household is about symmetry. Everything. When she got the scar, she started wearing her hair on the other side. Because she was... She, demanded not to be symmetrical. It was her own subtle rebellion. And that continues. And I'm excited to see where she's going to go. We saw her training in the intro and it's clear now that that's her room and Winter isn't gonna be training her necessarily because clearly Winter's out of the name as well. Her father clearly doesn't like her either. I was thinking that maybe Winter would come back and tell Weiss how to oppose her father in a way that is like, oh, it's, it's giving him a taste of his own medicine, but with less emotional abuse and manipulation. So it's like, I'm making this statement that I am doing this, you cannot stop me, but the fact that I'm presenting it to you this way is something you can respect. But I'm almost more happy that this happened, because this wasn't her sister looking out for her. This was Weiss looking after herself. And that's something that she needs. After an entire childhood of devoting herself to being this picture-perfect picture, picture perfect daughter, she's finally deciding, no, I will be me. And there is nothing in your right mind you can do to stop me. And... I'm so happy to see that. Lysa's character growth is amazing. It's one of my favorite things to think about because she's come so far in her whole life. And then Tyrion. When we started off this episode, I was expecting it to pick up right away, but I should have known. It's Rooster Teeth. When do they ever pick off right after a, cl a cliffhanger? <sighs> like, so we know Kronos who Salem is. We knew that from Raven. 
but Tyrion knows of him. Even if Crow doesn't know him, but Tyrion knows of him. Which is almost more telling, because that means that they haven't met in the past. That means he was briefed. That at some point, either Salem, Cinder. I don't think I've talked about it on this channel at this point, but I've had this theory about maidens somewhat having a protector. Like, a guardian who maybe follows a little bit behind, kind of like a guardian angel, who's just kind of... They, you know that they're nearby, so if you get into deep shit, they can help. That's why Crow may have been behind Amber that entire time. And oh, this episode changes everything. Even back to volume one, the after credit scene, the queen has pawns. We all thought it was Cinder, but it's not. It's Salem. They refer to her as queen, as goddess. Her pawns were Cinder and Emerald, and Mercury, and Tyrion, and Watts, and Hazel. And I think Cinder's the one who told Tyrion about Crow, because Cinder knows him. When he went after Amber, and as soon as Cinder had gotten the Fall Maiden's power the first time, she blurred her face. You don't blur your face unless that person knows you. And clearly some time has passed, considering her hair went from, like, this length to, like, this length. So clearly some time has passed. And even then, like, you could forget a face, but in the heat of battle, you'd either remember it forever or you'd never. So he knows her. He knew her before that happened. So my best guess is that, and just the way that Cinder speaks to Pyrrha that one last time, is you were promised a power that was never truly yours. It comes from a place of understanding. I wouldn't be surprised if Crow, Raven, maybe Taiyang, but probably not. Crow, Raven, Summer, and Cinder, they're all roughly-ish the same age approximately, give or take. They may have all tried to be brought into the Beacon Secret Society of Maidenhood, of whatever their conspiracy theory cult name is, and Maybe Cinder was up to be one of the maidens, but then they realized that she had this desperate need for power. This just desperate need to manipulate and, and just corrupt anything, do anything she possibly could to gain some semblance of power. And they knew that giving her the abilities of a maiden would not go over. But she was brought in. She was promised a power that was never truly hers. So she became a- they made her a protector. Maybe even Raven was supposed to be a Summer's protector. But she was like, haha, no, I'm going back to my tribe, you know, crazy. That's how he knows- that's how she would know about the Maidens. Because they're not common knowledge. You have to be in the Illuminati to know what's going on. That, that has been established perfect several times. So... Maybe that's what happened with them, and maybe Tai Yang found out if Summer was actually a maiden and Crow was assigned to Amber. But if Team Stark was one of the best and brightest of Beacon, it would make sense for them to be the defenders of maidens. At least those around Vale. So that's how Tyrion would know him. Because Cinder knows him, because she knows what he can do, how he fights. That's how Tyrion somewhat knew what to expect. And everything is still a game to him, but... I, I kind of want to go in order of what happened in the episodes. I'm not going to talk about what Tyrion says at the end yet, but... Ruby. I love her, but sometimes she needs to chill, okay? <laughs> like... When he said, get back, she did long range. That is smart. That is what you do. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed that Nora and Ren didn't jump in there. Like, they tried and got knocked back originally, but that was with close range. Clearly, they can't keep up with Tyrion. Even Crow had trouble. So clearly, they can't. So go from a distance. Nora, you have a grenade launcher. Granted, I can understand why Nora necessarily wouldn't be able to help, because grenade launcher, that is a massive area that has a huge AoE. That would hurt Crow in the process. So I can understand her not doing anything, but... 
Ren probably, I, well, I guess none of them are long range. And sword, and John's sword is also not a gun. So I can get, I, all right, I, I, I take that back. I can give them some slap there because I hadn't thought that through. Um, but Ruby was smart and as soon as they, and Crow was using his environment and it was ingenious. And that was a huntsman in action. We saw that before with Ozpin and Cinder, but it's very clear those two are on two other levels. That was a Fall Maiden versus some Avatar looking Wizard of Oz motherfucker. So... <laughs> That that was clearly, but even with Winter and Crow, they were it's split it's splitting move over here one moment over here the next, and that continued to show with Tyrion. But it was a little harder to track most likely with all of his movements, so they very clearly slowed that down a little. But Ruby, when she charged in, she was doing what she thought was right, and she was helping. And then there was she had no aura, there was no safety net. So when the pillar was going to fall and Crow caught it, there was that brief moment that was all Tyrion needed. Because he preys on where you're weakest, when you're distracted. And just... Now they finally are learning a bit about Salem, that's nice. So now it's kind of a, what the hell is going on, Crow? Also, actual swearing. Whoa. Like, we've heard, I think Crow said damn once. I think it was like, I don't give a damn about your rules, but damn and bitch are at some pretty different levels. And I'm glad that they're kind of doing it, because, you know, they're bad guys. And Tyrion's the kind of person who I think would swear very similar to how I do on streams, where it's, like, very creative, very twisted, like, oh, sweetie, honey, I'm going to take that sword and shove it so far up your anus, it punctures your brain, kind of terms. So the fact that he just instinctively was like, you bitch. Nothing beyond that just shows rage. Also, we saw blood. That was a thing. We don't see blood much in the world of Remnant. We really don't. Unless it wasn't blood. It probably wasn't blood. Um, but, like, we saw it with Weiss. So we know it's a thing. But Tyrion. They, they were extra careful to show the purple eyes this time. And that's important because Crow got stung. He got stung by a scorpion. Which... I realize not everyone knows this, but, you know, I live with scorpions. I've grown up with scorpions. And even if you, they have Deathstalker, so they don't have an excuse. Like, a Deathstalker, like, there's an 800% chance that thing has venom in its tail. So, e even if it grazes you, you should go see a doctor. Because it's immediately going to cause some problems, especially if it's in a vital area. That is a problem, Crow Branwen. That is a mother problem. <laughs> but... I think this is also the first time we've seen Ruby, like, actually really physically injure someone. Because there's always been auras. Of which, huge applause to the animation team for adding in the subtle things. You see Crow's aura flicker. You see Tyrion's flicker. Because they're matched. They're virtually matched. And Crow's likely exhausted from flying all that way. Oh, but she still didn't use his semblance. We still haven't seen that. So I'm wondering if there's, like, we, we saw a hint at it once. Maybe, but there's definitely, unless his stumble is turning into a bird. That's not entirely clear. It's probably, that's probably a semblance, but you can see it flickering. And it was such, it added a whole other dimension to it, because Aura's been kind of abstract. We see it once in volume one when Pierrot's exchanging with Jean, and it's this glowing light. That's, that's the main time we ever see it. It's never really brought up. You see it, you never really see it physically, and then it's brought up in the terms of, like, a screen in Volume 1 and in Volume 3, but you never really see it again until when Pyrrha dies. That's the first time you see an aura shatter. You don't see it with Amber. I don't, I don't think, I don't believe we do. But, so being able to see it so frequently, it's like the Grim, it makes it more real, it becomes more of a solid thing. It is like a force field around, that you generate around your body that is essentially, like, a hard shell that moves along with you and it gets cracked and it flickers and it gives out. And they were both showing that. And Tyrion's was purple. Crow's was red. And I'm wondering what color Yang's is. I'm gonna guess red, but at the same time, Ruby's is red. And I think Nora's was pink. And Jean was yellow. That would make sense. Um But it's intriguing. And now on to... So I'm guessing it was poison that came out of this tail, not necessarily blood, unless he has purple blood. 
I don't know what color a scorpion's blood is because whenever I squish them, it's just kind of like. But the way that he talks about her, it is, oh, my goddess, my empress, my queen. And then once he realizes that he doesn't have a singer, that he's like his aura is depleted if Ruby could do that. That took out the rest of his aura and it took out the top end of his tail. And I, I kind of knew that was going to happen. That was a spoiler I saw. But it was more of his tail than I thought it was. I thought it was just like the, lab, the actual stinger. But um, is he's walking back essentially with his tail between his legs. He does. He's he's trying to do. The, he's trying to be as shifty as he is normally. That's who he is. He's backing up. He's looking for an escape. But he's used to fighting with three appendages, not two. And there's more of them than there are of him. And he can't do half of the techniques he usually does because he can't stand on his tail when his tail is missing half of it and he's probably in excruciating pain and he doesn't have the aura to protect himself. So he's not going in because he knows that going in would most likely be some vague form of a suicide attempt. So he just says, she'll forgive me, she'll forgive you, she'll forgive you. He's terrified of her. This is Galadriel in Lord of the Rings if she got the Great Ring. This would have been all will seem like all will see me and despair. Like, I know that's not the exact line, but she is this, to them, she's this dark, ethereal being. This embodiment of celestial void and darkness at, that they worship, but they know that they're pawns to her. They don't overestimate their value. And the question is, What's going to happen to Tyrion now? Because that Ruby Amino theory talked about Tyrion being in a cage. That's why he sat Avatar style. That's why he sat crouching, why he had to look where he was standing, how his behavior where he looks wrapped up. And my thinking is he has those scars. The, every, way, every time he moves his tail, I can't, can't help but wondering if those scars were self-inflicted, if something happened. Because they follow angles that would make sense if they were. If you were sticking your tail out, it would make sense for it to cut that way. And just with the line, so I'm thinking those, like, so if he was kept in a cage, that would make sense. And he could be ever so worshipping Salem because maybe she's the one who freed him. Maybe he feels in debt to this goddess who saved him, even though by the time that he was saved, maybe some of his sanity was gone. I'm actually concerned for the asshole. Like, ugh. Can you imagine, like, having part of, like, like, I imagine that's, like, the equivalent of having, like, your, like, because it kind of moves like a wrist, I guess. So, like, if you had, like, 12 wrists and, what like, four of them were cut off, like, that throws things off entirely. You, lo you lose an entire range of motion. So, oh, she's not going to forgive him, though. I don't think she is. I don't think she can give him his tail back. I really don't think it can, considering she couldn't give Salem her eye- Salem, she couldn't give Cinder her eye back. So... Uh, I think there's really only two options. Either she- there, well, more than two. She could kill him, which I wouldn't be surprised, that seems very Salem. If he's not worth anything to her, he would be baggage. And that could work to Cinder feeling more complicated about what she had done, which I'm still- Hoping is going to happen. I feel like Cinder, now that she's like she's too far into it to try to redeem herself, and she knows that, but she's not. She's kind of like I fucked up. I just want to go away. Don't be a part of this. But it's too late. So she's just like, I am here. I can't really not be here. I really don't want to be here though. So I'm just gonna. She, I feel like she's just generally uncomfortable with the way the whole situation has played out. And then, uh, but. Tyrion could be cast out to the waste to be devoured by Grimm. He could be killed. He could be stranded. But I think almost more twisted would be if he comes back, like, slinking in through the door, begging for forgiveness on his hands and knees. Just like, look what they did to me. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't get them. Like, there's more, there was more than just her. Like, all this is wrong. And Salem just caresses his cheek and does that thing where she, where, that she does with Cinder. And it's like, my child, you have done well. There's, there's two options. She could either be like, you have done well, she can manipulate him further. Because if he feels broken like that, 
if he feels like he's lost a part of himself and he's so scared and if she gives him acceptance in the face of that fear he will devote himself to her even more completely so she he could be an even more deadly puppet even if he doesn't have his venom or his tail because if he lives for her then he'll be more than willing to die for her and that's almost more terrifying But if she doesn't, like, no doubt Watts will be like, nope, you failed. You're out. You're out. He'll lose. He'll definitely lose rank. Like, if they were positioned in rank in the opening, where I think it was Salem, Tyrion, or, like, Salem, Hazel, Tyrion, Watts. Cinder, I keep getting them confused. I know I shouldn't, but uh, Cinder, Tyrion, Hazel, Watts. I think it was actually Cinder, Hazel, Tyrion, Watts. But he moves down a couple ranks. And I'm interested to see who goes next, because Hazel's going to go see Sienna Khan, so it's not him. And then Watts was going to go meet with someone, but if this is the thing, Watts, Mr. Cocky Mustache over there, is most maybe the next one targeted, because Hazel's a little bit busy dealing with her close personal allies and the recent return of a certain former chieftain's daughter. But I don't know if he can fight. Just, I don't know what it is about him. Tyrion looks like a fighter. He moves like a fighter. It looks like he thinks like one. Watts reminds me of Papa Shmi. He thinks and moves and speaks like a diplomat in a hard, unfortunately political, and rude one at that. Like, if he and Papa Shmi sat down, they would either have a beer or both of them would be poisoned within the hour. So I, ca I can't imagine him fighting. I just can't. So I don't know what comes next. Maybe... It's Cinder, but I don't think Cinder is through enough with her how to deal with the grim inside of you treatment to do that. Oh, there, was just, there was just so much in this episode. Oh. Between, we, we now know the relationship between Oscar and Ospin, more or less. Ospin's soul was moved into his body as well, so I can imagine it's pretty cramped. Who knows how many times that happened before. I guess it's kind of, you, you eventually... It becomes two minds essentially being drift compatible, finding one mind and then finding one mind in it, where it may be primarily Oscar with all of Ospin's wisdom and experience added onto that. AKA, Oscar's the next avatar. Tell your friends. It's also weird because I keep hearing Alphonse and whenever he speaks, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> just Crow and Oscar need to have a conversation, and it's like, you're awfully short, aren't you, kid? Like, that would just make me so happy. That would just bring me such great joy. It probably won't happen. At least not for a while. But, you know, I can dream. But, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. I'm excited to see what you guys thought about this episode. And thank you for not spoiling it for me. I think there was only a couple people who started commenting things about it. And I just scrolled past them. But thank you guys so, so much for trying hard. And on Twitter, you guys were like, don't worry, we're not going to spoil anything. Just get ready for hell. So thank you guys for that. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching and commenting and subscribing. And I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. And if you're celebrating Hanukkah right now, or I think Hanukkah may have just ended by the time this comes out, I hope you had a wonderful Hanukkah. So enjoy your holidays, because they're awesome. Drink hot cocoa, eat cinnamon rolls, treat yourself. Yes. I don't know what happened there. But... Um, I'll be bringing my Nora cosplay back with me to school, so I'll get a photo shoot done there, because there's no way I can get one done back home, unfortunately. But there will be Nora pictures soon! Uh, and probably Sailor... Which one was I doing again? Neptune. Sailor Neptune's almost done. So, that'll be a thing. I'm really tempted to just get, like, a cheap $10 like, bright blue wig and just go as Sailor Neptune, like, Ruby Neptune, so just, like, Sailor Neptune Vasilius, because <laughs> I think that'd be fun, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm rambling. A uh, couple updates about the channel, actually. Uh, I'm going to be doing my best to post videos more, so there'll be videos Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday. So Saturday, of course, is reaction day for Ruby, but until then, my best guess is that Tuesday or Thursday, I'll either one of those will be a let's play video and then I'm actually right after this I'm gonna record some camp camp reaction videos because I didn't think people would want to see those I don't know I just I, did, I got the impression that I was like I didn't really have a lot of time to watch camp camp and I wasn't really sure how they were going over so I was like eh, you know whatever 
well, watch it later. I still haven't seen past the first episode. I still have no idea what's going on in this season, despite the fact that I'm wearing the shirt. It's really soft, by the way. Um, so I'm going to be putting, like, a camp camp up every week. So that may be on Tuesdays. So, like, camp camp on Tuesdays, video games on Thursdays, and Ruby on Saturdays. And hopefully I'll be able to stream at least once a week back when I'm at school because my schedule is a little bit more compliant with what I want to do. So... I should hopefully be able to stream at least for a little bit, because, you know, I love streaming Dishonored. I'm actually going to stream the end of it, of the good ending today. And with the Steam sale, the winter Steam sale, I got some, like, 40 games that I, I got a lot of them exclusively to play on this channel, because a lot of them just look, like, fun. I got a lot of horror games, because I, I love horror games. Um, I'm, a, I'm a pretty brave person, but... Jump scares get me the first couple times, but they don't, like, scare me, scare me. And then there's games like Dungeon Nightmares, where it's just the atmosphere and the suspense just weighs down until I'm, like, in a corner shaking. So get ready for that. <laughs> and then I'm working on my RTX video, and I'm working on many a thing. I'll probably be doing a thing about my Nora cosplay as well, so I can talk about how that build was. So if you guys want to do Nora Volume 4, I can help you out with that. So, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in and enjoying this entire, like, 50-minute video. I think this is the longest one so far. But I can't be surprised. Um, Rooster Teeth. This was one sick, twisted present, you know that? You gave us the gift of information, and thus you gave us the gift of more questions. But seriously, Crow needs to, like, go get that checked out, because that is not a thing. That A hurts like a bitch, because in some way, a scorpion is not... It's no es bueno. It's no, no, it's blue. It's, mm, but, oh, the final line. The final line. What's your favorite fairy tale? I swear to God, if anyone asks me that question now, like, that's going to be the equivalent of... <sighs> it's like there's certain phrases that with rooster teeth you just can't hear the same way anymore. Like... You, you just can't. I'm trying to think of examples, but there's a lot. Like, I, I can't hear, um... It's like with Mulan. Like, if someone says, let's get down to business, you can't not say to defeat the Huns. It's like a thing. So whenever it says, like, what the fuck is with this guy? I'm like, okay, Wash, sure. And now it's going to be like, hey, what, Aaron, what's your favorite fairy tale? And I'm just going to be like... <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> God forbid, my short story writing class, my third semester, my third quarter is just gonna be. They're probably gonna ask that question. I'm gonna sit here like, you don't want to just, just, just skip, skip, skip. It'll be great. <laughs> so, thank you guys so so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want with your lives. I hope you have a wonderful 2017. Because I think. This, oh yeah, no, this will be the last video that comes out before the new year. So, tell me your guys' New Year's revolution. Re revolutions? Revelations? Resolutions! Resolutions! With an S, not a V, not revolutions. Um, so yeah, talk about what you thought about the episode, about your resolutions. How do you think Salem is going to react when Tyrion comes crawling back? I mean, I know for the new year, personally, um, I'm mostly just hyped for RTX. I, I'm planning stuff for side quests. I'm going to be auctioning off some props and whatnot to go to charity. I'm excited to meet you guys, and hopefully we can actually have a battle cast panel, that would be awesome, but I'm planning cosplays, and as far as resolutions go, gotta get some more ice time. I really miss going ice skating, I was able to go over break, and it was like, oh god, this is awesome, but there's not a rink near my school, so I'm just gonna go to the gym for like three hours instead. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Maybe do some dance stuff. I don't know. I want to be more active, both in the community and physically. Uh, a little bit more productive on cosplays, like putting more time into them, because in the past I've always kind of rushed them, so I always have like flyaway strands. I don't necessarily how, like how it looks. So this time I want to be thorough and dedicated, even more so than normal. So those are primarily my goals for right now, at least. Oh, I want to finish completing Mass Effect, because I have like 90-80% of the achievements in Mass Effect 1. But I don't have all of them because you have to go on 50 missions with each of the companions, and that takes like 30 hours per playthrough, and you can only have two of them at a time, so then it's like... I think I'm up to like 200 hours in Mass Effect. But I finally got it for my PC, so now I can just do it whenever I want, and I can stream it. And I actually have an idea for another thing to be putting up, but it wouldn't be as frequent, it'd probably be like once a month. But I wanted to run it past you guys. It's something that I was thinking about called the Completionist Time with Aaron. 
where it's just like a brief five, 10 minute video where it's like, this is the game I'm working on completing on. These are the achievements. This is a bitch. Don't do it. Don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Just pretty much comedic me just trying to be civil and like sipping tea and being like, ha, 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 tea and crumpets. Ha, 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 ha. And then usually by the end of it, it's just like, you other give me the achievement. So I hope you guys enjoyed my stream screaming. I'm very hyper right now, which is funny because Starbucks messed up my coffee order. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, again, of course. How could I forget? A huge thank you to the animation team. Again, that was a beautiful fight. All of it was incredible and amazing, and I need to go immediately thank all of them on Twitter. And you guys who are watching this should go do the same. Because they they all put a lot of work, they all put a lot of effort, and it's wonderful, and they deserve good, wonderful things. So, do the thing, and I will see you guys in the next video.